What's going on, y'all? So I saw this article. I was like, I got to bring it to y'all. Got to bring it to y'all. Avatar The Last Airbender showrunner opens up about making series without original creators. We already know a while back the creators of the original Avatar The Last Airbender animated show had said that they are parting ways. They're not doing this live action thing with Netflix anymore. So we'll just talk about what the current showrunner, Albert Kim, said about this. Let's get into it. Okay, when Albert Kim first got the call from Netflix to work on the live action series adaptation of Avatar, uh, his response was close to hell yeah. The writer from Pantheon, blah, 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 had become a fan of the original Nickelodeon cartoon, which is considered sacred territory by many. Absolutely, you can say that again. Uh, he watched initially thinking he would need to explain the concepts to his daughter, but then became completely consumed with the saga himself. The storytelling alone was just so epic and much beyond the audience it was targeted for. Uh, he tells EW in December, marking his first interview on the new drama. Then, to borrow a turn of phrase from the animated show, everything changed when Brian and Michael, the original creators of Avatar, departed the Netflix project after being involved for two years. Their public statements in 2020 came as a blow to the fandom. Michael mentioned he couldn't control the creative direction of the series, and while he acknowledged Netflix's live action adaptation of Avatar has the potential to be good, it ultimately ultimately wouldn't be the show that he or Brian set out to make. Now, while all parties appear to part ways on good terms, Michael and Brian are now working on multiple other animated Avatar projects, which I'm very excited about. I cannot wait. Um, Kim admits it feels the showrunner, the current showrunner um, for Netflix, the Netflix iteration, um, admits it absolutely felt daunting to continue the Netflix adaptation as showrunner without the original creators. Uh, he said, you'd have to be an idiot not to be intimidated a little bit. Uh, my first reaction after Hell Yeah was, holy shit, do I really want to do this? Is there a way to improve upon the original? Whenever you tackle something that's already beloved by millions of fans, you have to ask yourself those questions. His answer, if not already obvious, was yes. He did still want to do this for all the reasons he fell in love with the original in the first place, fantasy TV epics like Game of Thrones and The Witcher are rooted in Western European folklore, but Avatar, Kim points out, is rooted in Asian culture. That was incredibly rare. It still is, he says. A live action version meant setting new benchmarks for representation by featuring an all Asian and indigenous cast. Now, is the jury still out on soccer though? Like, does motherfucker play soccer? I thought there was something going on, like he wasn't indigenous or something like that. <laughs> I digress though. Y'all just let me know in the comments or whatever. Um, so not to mention, it's been more than 15 years since the original went off the air, though it spawned sequel series, The Legend of Korra, comic books, video games, and the like. That was really appealing to me, being able to bring this story to a new generation. So here it just talks about the uh, synopsis of the show and what Aang is doing and, and you know, who he's fighting and all this shit. So just, just here, I want to take the moment and say, I don't think it's so much that I don't trust the, the showrunners for this Netflix show. I just don't trust Netflix. Some of Netflix projects is really, really good. They're fun. They're amazing. They do what they need to do. But others, it's just like, we've seen how they treated some of our favorite shows. They just canceled them shits out the blue. The, the, the budget be garbage for some of them. It's just like, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't trust Netflix. And, and the main reason I don't trust Netflix is because, I don't know, you should be doing everything in your power to keep the original creators on this show, on the on board. They were on for two years. They were on board for two years. What did y'all do? <laughs> what did, what did y'all do to fuck that up? Like two years? So that's one of the many reasons why I'm like, and, and on top of this, this is a new picture from um th like this article that just came out. So it's the first look at it, new picture. And it's just like, I really want to be more impressed. I really want to be more impressed, y'all. But I'm just not. Like, it's giving cosplay. I'm just not. <laughs> I don't know, y'all. Like, it's not giving yet. It's the, I, I want to be proven wrong. I want to eat my words. I really do. But it really rubs me the wrong way that the original creators are not on and that they were on for two years and Netflix was just like, okay, well, girl, I mean, if y'all want to walk, y'all can walk. It's just, I don't know. But yeah, I want to be, prove me wrong. Please, Netflix, prove me wrong. I want to be proven wrong. <laughs> um, so Michael and Brian's presence isn't completely absent 
From the live action series, traces of them still exist. Kim sat down with the duo in the early days before their departure to pick their brains. He recalls, it ran the range of really nerdy little things that no one except for diehard fans might wonder about. Questions about Katara's mom or Aang's parentage to bigger picture stuff about how to translate what made the original so special into a live action version. At the same time, he stresses, this is Avatar The Last Airbender, but it is our version of Avatar The Last Airbender. So now I think they're about to get into like, okay, I'm letting y'all know that yes, we're gonna, you know, have an adaptation of it, but we're gonna have to change some shit up. And it's just like, okay, what exactly y'all changing? The animated original told a story that played out over a 20 Challenge of the Week style episodes in its first season before transitioning into a more serialized approach in its second and third seasons. The live action Avatar will instead begin to adapt the main events with an eight episode hour long drama format for the initial run. As such, Kim explains, some events will have a strict one-to-one -one adaptation while others will be remixed. For one, um, he said, we don't start the show the way the animated series starts. That was a conscious decision to show people this is not the animated series. For another, he said we had to sometimes unravel storylines and remix them in a new way to make sense for a serialized drama. So I'm very curious to see what will happen in terms of reaction to that. Shit, me too. <laughs> me too, girl. I'm very curious to see what's going to happen. Um, so in the end, the team's goal was to remain true to the original spirit of the animated series while delivering a massive sweeping fantasy epic. All of our writers are also fans of the original, so they drew upon their own personal experiences and the things that they love best. We made sure to include all of those in the show. So there you have it. We got a new look at um, some uh, just one picture, I guess. And then we had the showrunner here, Albert Kim, talking about doing the show without the original creator. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to you already know how I feel about it. I think that it's just it's really a an interesting uh, it, it's something to pay attention to. Right. The fact that the creators were on for so fucking long and then they said, girl, actually, no. You know, and I'm just like, I just, if I was Netflix, I'd be like, bitch, what the hell do y'all want to stay on? Like, what do y'all want? What do y'all need for me to do? Um, but I think, I, I just hope that this is not one of those cases of like company arrogance, Netflix's arrogance, where it's like, and it seems like it might be, where it's like, well, we could do this shit without you. And it's just like, okay, can you? Because if y'all fuck it up, I'm gonna be so mad. I'm gonna be so mad. And the crea the original creators was mad already. So then that's why they left. <laughs> so, it's, so it's just like, you know, I'm seeing what I'm seeing and I'm like, it really could, it could be something, but at the same time, it's like, sometimes Netflix just really do me wrong sometimes, like, you know, and it could be really, you know, shiny on the outside, but then when we start the episodes, it could really give us, <laughs> it could give us nothing or they could knock it out the park, right? Like, really, it could, it, to me, we could, we, we just got to see what the hell they're, they're going to serve us, right? But as of right now, this is really all the information that we have. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you leave in the comments what exactly you're expecting from this, uh, from this series, from Netflix. Um, love y'all so much and I'll check y'all later. Peace. Make sure you check out my series. I published the first book back in 2020. It's called Zaraxia, Wrath of the God King. Links will be in my description. It comes in ebook form as well as audiobook form. I'm working on the sequel. I'm hoping to release it next year. Here is an excerpt of it. Yeah, you can pause to read if you really want to get into it. You know what I mean? The sequel is already twice as long as the book I've already self-published. So yeah, the series is definitely coming along. But yeah, check out the first book. It's the first First one in the series so go easy on me i was just setting everything up you know what i mean figuring things out but either way it has a 4.9 star rating on amazon so yeah you should get into it <laughs>